Welcome to a demonstration of the removable electronics module in the IPX2 from More Industries. Hi, this is Richard Manfredi with More Industries, and today we're going to discuss the removable electronics module in the IPX2 Explosion Proof and Intrinsically Safe Current to Pressure Transmitter. The IPX2 not only works with instrument air, but it's also designed and approved to work with natural gas as the supply medium. When it's installed on a natural gas line, it's not uncommon for a liquid slug to enter the IPX's supply line. Depending on the size and duration of the slug, it may be necessary to remove the electronics module to perform cleaning or possibly even draining. This video shows exactly how the IPX2 recovers when it receives a liquid slug. In this demonstration, a slug in the gas supply is simulated with colored water. When two valves are opened, a mixture of gas and water is fed into the unit. As you can see, the slug temporarily disrupts the output. However, once the liquid is cleared away from the internal gas passages in the unit, the output returns to normal. Looking at the upper chamber of the unit, you can see that there is very little liquid present inside. Because there is a pressure differential between the upper chamber and lower chamber, any accumulated liquid will move from the upper to bottom chamber and eventually be displaced by a vent at the bottom of the unit. I've asked Rolando Toledo, an engineer here at Moore Industries, to help us out. He's going to be showing us some of the more technical elements of removing the electronics module. First off, Rolando is going to walk us through some basics. If slots do enter the unit, the IPX2 has an orifice and a nozzle that should be checked to ensure they're free of any debris or grit. While the unit has been designed to be clock resistant, sometimes the small particles can pass the filters and regulators. But this is where being able to remove the electronics module allows you to quickly inspect, clean or replace it in the field as needed. The best part about the IPX2's electronics is that it can be replaced in just a few minutes using some simple tools. Before we proceed, a word about safety. It's important that you disconnect the unit from power before you begin doing any work. It should also be in a non-hazardous area free from any explosive gas mixtures. Now, let's see how you can remove the electronics. There are three simple steps. First, we will need a three millimeter Allen wrench to remove the cover. Locate the locking screw and turn it clockwise until the cover is loose. Then you can easily remove it. Second, we will need a Phillips screwdriver to remove the electrical connections. Third, with the same screwdriver, locate the four mounting screws. Two on the top and two on the bottom. Loosen them. Then carefully pull the module out of the unit. I'd like to point out the pneumatic stem on the bottom of the module. Take caution when removing or lifting the electronics module out of the housing. Bending this nozzle can affect the unit's performance. Now that we have the electronics module removed, we can also inspect the barrier plate inside the unit for any excessive moisture or debris. We can dry off these items and drain any trapped moisture. When we finished inspecting and cleaning the unit, we just reversed the steps to secure the electronics module and barrier plate back into the housing and then replace the cover. If for some reason you find that the electronics module is damaged, you can quickly replace it with a new electronics module and recalibrate the unit. It's always recommended to have spare electronics modules on hand for quick field repairs to reduce downtime. I want to thank Rolando for helping us out, and I want to thank you for watching. And remember that you can always find out more information about the IPX2 
and all of More Industries products by going to our website at www.miinet.com. Thanks again for watching.